All right, we're joined by Maryland head coach John Tillman and student athletes Daniel Kelly and Jack McDonald. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll turn it over for questions for the student athletes. Once we're finished with questions for the student athletes, we'll dismiss that back to the locker room and we'll open it up to questions for coach. Coach? Uh, yeah, just first want to say congrats to Notre Dame, uh, Kevin Corrigan and his staff and his team. Uh, uh, obviously, to me, you know, for the last two years, it has been the best team, and, and, and they were the most consistent team all year. Uh, they proved it. Um, they were certainly the best team today. Um, so hats off to them. Uh, I just think the way they play, uh, they're just really, really good everywhere, whether it's the talent they have. Um, someone said they had 11 All-Americans. Um, felt like it uh, today. Uh, but just the way they play, they play very poised. They are very unselfish. Um, they just make great decisions at the other end. They're buttoned up defensively. They're super athletic. Uh, they're awesome in the goal, and they're really, really good at the faceoff back. So uh, don't don't have any weaknesses. Uh, I knew it would be a, a big challenge. Uh, just, you know, have played them once before, but then putting on the film and then, you know, kind of watching during the year. Um, they are awesome, and they are worthy champions. They deserve it. Uh, they were better than us today. Um, but I, I love our guys. Uh, obviously, the locker room was really hard. Um, it always is. We kind of talked about it the other day at the end, win or lose, it's always sad. Uh, we just have such a good group. I I'm so proud of these guys. Um, and it may sound like a, cheesy, a cheesy cliche, but um, you know, you go on this journey, it's filled with ups and downs. There's a lot of ways where you could kind of, you know, just kind of go off the tracks. Um, and at times this year, we were leaking some oil, uh, but you know, our leadership, including these two guys, uh, just never let it happen. Um, so. Again, the, the way they handled all that, the way they stuck together, the way they kept fighting, uh, to me, I'm proud of them for that. And as I said the other day, these are the things they need to be able to do going forward because as Dick Adele said, if this is the worst day of their life, uh, they're gonna have amazing lives. I know they hurt right now and it should hurt because they put so much in, but um, you know, if I'm someone that loves Maryland lacrosse and Maryland sports, like this group, they laid it all out. Certainly, if you want to just look at us for 60 minutes, you can judge us that way. I refuse to. I know what these guys have done since August, so I love them. I'm proud of them. I'm sad to say goodbye to a lot of them, but I'm excited for the next part of their lives because those guys are going to crush it. Questions for student athletes? Start here. Patrick. Patrick. Yeah, they're they're an awesome team. I mean, with the firepower they have, with the Cavanaugh's and running three midfields deep, uh, it's tough. I mean, they have some just awesome players, and they capitalized on our mistakes. And it was very uh, apparent when we made those mistakes, like a bunch of older guys, and they just made plays. So hats off to them. They were deep. A lot of older guys. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Okay, yeah, yeah. back there. Daniel, first of all, congratulations on a great playoff run in the team. Both of you guys, uh, just where we are to be here, 75 other teams aren't here, or we were. But Daniel, you got off to a great offensive start, the offense, and then, you know, two goals in a couple minutes, and then things slowed down. What, what was missing today? Yeah, I just think it was, uh, it was tough for us to draw slides at times, um, and, and they did a good job, our hats off to, to Notre Dame, but I mean, I, I I can't speak highly enough about the group that we have in that locker room. Um, we've been through a lot, a lot of ups and downs, but we stuck together and we never lost hope. Um, and, and this is a group that, that believes in one another. And I wouldn't trade any anybody in that locker room for anybody else. Um, I truly love all 50 of those guys. And, and uh, Terps across, we'll be back. We'll be back next year. For uh, Daniel and Jack, after the game ended, uh, you guys really had a long huddle up to the side of the entire team. What was said kind of in that moment and just kind of reflecting back on it, what was that moment like when the result, uh, the result was finalized? Yeah, I think uh, in that moment, it, it just sucks. Like you look at 50 of your best friends and you strive to achieve one goal. And we've done that since August. And uh, you see it in everyone's face. I think it was kind of just looking at each other and realizing that we put everything we could into this year. And for all that, we should just keep our heads high. I mean, Notre Dame played a great game, but it should not take away from what this group was able to accomplish this year. And uh, just gonna suck. Uh, I mean, you're losing some of your best friends. So 
I think we just looked at each other in that moment and embraced it. Yeah, I mean, you realize in that moment that it's over. You know, that locker room will never be the same. Um, all 50 of us will probably never be in the same room again. Um, and that's what's hard. You know, you, he said it, Jack said it, you lose some of your best buddies that you've been through a lot with, a lot of ups and downs, especially this group. But, um, you know, we're, we're proud of what we were able to do. Um, and, and nobody believed in this group besides the 50 guys and coaches that we had in our locker room. Gene Warren from Washington Post. Jack, you mentioned some mistakes you guys made. 16 turnovers. Was that not being buttoned up as you would like on the ball, or was the Notre Dame was doing a combination? Yeah, it was definitely a combination. I think a little bit of the weather, just sticks and stuff like that. No excuse though, but definitely from our end, and they did a great job riding. Because Kavanaugh's, they fly around. You think you're think you're open for a second, and you're not. Uh, but something that we preached and we just got away from it. So uh, I would say it was a combination. Go here and then back in the back. Uh, for Daniel, um, I think it was a brick wall in case you over 75%. What, what was difficult about the publicity was getting you guys in offense? Um, I mean, I, yeah, hats off to Liam. Um, I don't think we shot particularly well, but he doesn't have any weaknesses. Um, it's the hard part. You know, you think you have a great look, but he closes in on it pretty quickly. Um, He's a big kid too. He takes a lot of a lot of the net up, but I mean, there's a, a lot of those that we want back. David Leisure, Sports Talk, Philadelphia. If you guys jumped out to the tune-up lead, did Nerdy show anything differently, and you guys did, just didn't know how to respond to it? Um, I'm sure they made adjustments. Adjustments. Um, we tried to, <coughs> out, but you know, it's tough. I haven't watched the film, so it's tough to really say that. Wrap up right here for the student athletes. Uh, Dan, I know you mentioned uh, you know you know being able to get back to this point and how much things are going to be you know good moving forward for both of you guys. Just how much do you feel like that the group that's going to be back next year is going to be able to build on and be able to make those motions? Um, I have no doubt in my mind that, that the group coming back will, will be a great team. Um, you know, Coach Tillman installed a culture in Maryland. Um, and it's our job to live up to the standard every single day. Um, and that group coming back, they will do that. Um, we will do that. And um, I mean, it's tough to talk about next year right now, but I just can't tell you guys how proud I am of this group and how much love I have for, for each and every one of those guys in there. Um, they truly put it all out there and we went on an awesome run and it sucks to come up one game short and, and not put our best out there today. Um, but it doesn't take away the love and, and how much I truly care about each and every kid in that locker room. Thank you, gentlemen. You're dismissed. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll start here. Yeah, uh, oh. Bruce the gentleman, the gentleman behind oh, Paul Snyder from the Montauk Sun. Coach, they, uh, you know, it was a tight game, 3 3, and then they ran off seven straight goals. Their offensive ex uh, execution was outstanding during that run. And um, what, I, what I wanted to ask you is, defense does win championships. You guys played a heck of a defense against Virginia. I thought Enemin let a few goals in early, but then he just shut the door. And defensively, they were at another level. What, your comments? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, they. Uh they're, you know, I think Patrick asked me the other day about comparing them to our 22 team, and, and, and I actually, you know, thinking about it, they do remind me of that team. They really do. Um, they just offensively, they don't do a lot of different things, but they do a lot of things that um, allow them to play to their strengths, and they have such a good feel for each other, and everybody kind of plays to their strengths, and they just kind of know where each other are, but they also... They can beat you with the ball, and they can beat you without the ball. And uh, they got some leverage on some picks that we made some mistakes on the first half, but they really got us a lot off ball where we were trying to help a little too much, and they would just cut, and they have such a good feel for where guys are going to be, um, and they made us pay. Um, and I just feel like, you know, you mentioned it was 3-3, and then um, we just made some mistakes. You know, 11 turnovers in the first half, like you just can't do that with a team like that. You just can't. Like you can't give, keep giving them the ball back. And I felt like we, we got off to the start. We were hoping for it to nothing. And then I felt like they 
responded incredibly well. And then we just had all these short possessions and, and really they flipped the possession battle on our defense, like at the, towards the end of the first, uh, we had a couple huddles and it was like, guys, we, we, we need to help our defense right now and play complimentary lacrosse because they are getting, getting tired. Um, and when we started to get tired, we, you know, we made some mistakes and again, they made us pay. Uh, I thought they shot really well. Uh, I wouldn't change, uh, uh, trade Logan McNaney for anybody. I just wouldn't. And I know Liam is awesome. Um, and he obviously is the first team all American at towards and finals. It was awesome today. Um, but Logan's our guy and, uh, you know, I'm going to stick with my guy. Um, and obviously, uh, we didn't let him see a lot of good shots to get him heated up. I thought he did an awesome job in the second half. Um, and I wish we'd just given him some better ones to get into a flow, but I, I give him credit. He didn't quit. And I give our kids not uh, the credit because even to the whistle, we just kept playing. We, we knew what was going to happen, but at Maryland, like you just, you got to fight. Like that's what people expect from the Terps. And we were not going to back down from that. Uh, obviously we knew late, like we weren't coming back, but we had to play to the whistle. It's what we're about. It's who they are. And that's what they need to do forever. John Christian with his time across. 10 4 at halftime, but your extra man, you had that goal late in the first half, a little bit of momentum. Can you take me through what that uh, situation was or what you were looking for? Yeah, we, uh, man, I thought we, you know, we got the 10 4 and then another man up, and uh, I felt good about, you know, kind of what we were going to potentially run uh, and maybe what the options were. I thought Jack made a great pass to, to Eric to get one, and then if we could have gotten another one right there, maybe 10 5 going into the locker room. You know, you just never know. Um, and even with that last face-off, it was hard because, you know, we won the face-off, but, you know, it's 19 seconds left. And then by the time you get it, um, you're really not getting much out. So we, we did try to kind of talk about getting off as quickly as possible and maybe getting a quick six on five. Uh, but then you couldn't really run your man up unit out there um, because you weren't going to have time to run a play. But again, maybe we get one. Um, and then again, we can get it to 10-5 uh, and we did it. And then they came down and scored and again, give them credit. Um, you know, we were kind of hopefully finding uh, maybe a little crack and man, they just they pounced on it. And then they got another one. Um, and then it did just, you know, every time like we seem to get a, an opportunity or look, Liam would make a play. Um, and again, every time maybe we felt like we were doing a good job defensively. They cut um, or they find somebody and get a good look. And again, they always had an answer. And again, it's credit to Notre Dame. They're, they're an awesome team. Um, that's why I like having done this for a long time. Listen, I wish we had won. Um, and we did everything we could to prepare to win. Uh, but we would have had to play incredibly clean and really, really high level to win this game. Um, just because I, I watch enough film and I know what they've done over the course of the year. Uh, and they've been doing it to a lot of people. Uh, yeah, Coach, first of all, congratulations on getting this far. I mean, uh, there are times in the season we never thought that would happen. So you and the staff and the, and the players did a great job. But I have to give you a shot to take uh, a minute to talk about some of your seniors, especially number one and number 52. I mean, Luke was unbelievable today to win 17 faceoffs out of uh, 24. And number one, Ajax really, you know, and I'm not leaving out Chorus and I'm not leaving out Sarah Goose and everybody else, but talk about Ajax and uh, Luke Werman. Yeah, we, we, we could be in it forever. Um, if I truly told you everything I feel about them as, as people um, and players, and it just makes the journey so great when you're with kids you believe in, you love, and those guys, man, they're just, they're, their parents raised them right. Uh, neither of those guys were very highly recruited. Um, you know, and, and I look at how hard they worked and um, just how much they put in, uh, what great teammates they are. Um, obviously, the coaching staff uh, has done a great job with them. Tim O'Bransky has been doing our face-off stuff, and, um, you know, it's been wonderful with Luke, and Luke's done a great job with that. Um, and then with Ajax, um, you know, obviously means so much to us in so many different ways. Uh, wearing the number one's really hard. Uh, there's a lot of potential pressure with that. But um, we never felt like that would bother him, and that's a big part of wearing that number. Um, and we just know the passion that he plays with and how hard he works every day. Um, so I thought he you know, added to the legacy of number one. Um, so uh, again, uh, I'm going to miss those guys being around um, just because every day seeing them, it brings a smile to your face. Um, you enjoy being around them. You really do respect those guys. And, and that's our thing about this group. This group was wonderful. Um, great guys. I told them in there, like, 
I sleep on Saturday nights because I trust them and I know they're going to do the right things and we didn't have an issue one time all year. Um, academically, the guys do a great job. Uh, we're walking on the street yesterday and people are grabbing me saying, hey, I just want to let you know we walked by your kids. They all stopped. They signed autographs. They took pictures. They were really nice. Those are the things like you really want to make sure your kids are doing on top of obviously getting their degree, uh, representing school the right way. And obviously, you always want to win. Like, listen, we keep score for a reason, but this is not professional lacrosse. So you've got to make sure that, yeah, they're going to be good players, but they need to be great people and that be the best mentality. Um, you know, Bud Beardmore started it. We've just emphasized it. And these kids have really bought into it. Um, were we the best lacrosse team? Um, we weren't. Um, but I tell you what, I, I think, you know, we maxed out what we hit, uh, what, what we could. Um, and I'm, I'm not going to sleep real well, but I'll sleep better knowing I know how much the staff, the kids, um, everybody put into it because there really wasn't much we left on the table. Um, and again, it, it doesn't take away this thing, but you also, like, you sleep better at night knowing that we gave everything we could. We did. Um, Notre Dame clearly was the best team. They proved it today, uh, but they proved it all year. Sills, uh, you made no secret of how difficult this season was in terms of just figuring things out. How much do you feel like this team has kind of flipped its legacy a bit over the last three weeks? And how much does that kind of provide a foundation in your mind for, for next year? Yeah, and you, uh, you basically um, described my conversation with them. Um, you know, each team is unique. You love the guys. Um, again, only one team is truly happy. Um, and, uh, you know, like, you know, it's, it's hard to get this far and lose, but most teams lose their last game. You're either losing in the tournament, you're losing in your conference tournament, um, or maybe you didn't get to your tournament. So, uh, unfortunately, unlike football, like, you don't get the bowl game, um, so you're going to lose. Um, so, listen, if you're going to lose a game, uh, this is the one you want to lose because you've maxed your time with our kids. Sure, you've gotten to a certain point and you get this far and people are like, well, it hurts so much. Listen, we get more time together, sign me up. Sign me up. To get Maryland to Final Four weekend and see all those guys getting together, the guys like you know, spending time together, our fans, and to get to championship weekend, um, it's a celebration and that's not lost on me. Uh, but I told those guys at the end of the day, we can always go forward now when things aren't going well and talk about what the 24 team and yeah, we were like struggling at times. We were inconsistent. Uh, we didn't play as well as we would have liked and that's on me. Obviously, I'm the leader. I'm in charge and I got to figure out how to be better all year long. Um, but again, the guys stuck with it um, and we can always go back to the 24 team, especially when things aren't going well and say, hey, those guys stuck together. They figured it out. And there were a lot of guys that made, you know, sacrifices. Nick Red's playing short stick and George Stamos, and they were defensive guys um, within the last two years. So they got a short stick and played and did a really good job for us. Um, obviously, you know, Maliver's running out of the box and Irks is running out of the box. And so now they're changing positions. And the fact that the guys were so adaptable, they were so unselfish, again, to me, that's the culture. And, and those are the things that we need to build upon. Um, again, I'm not going to let 60 minutes uh, of, you know, not playing our best lacrosse take away from what those guys have given. Um, and these younger guys, they can take with them, like, just the, the kind of the approach and the attitude and the sacrifices. Um, and we can fall back on those things to try to obviously, you know, be better next year. Final two right here. Just going back to Ajax for a second. I know you touched on it with Bruce, but from a pure lacrosse perspective, once again, how one of the best offensive players in the country is Gerald Bowles today. What kind of example has he set for defensive that may have gone forward and what you can remember most about this season? Yeah, long legacy uh, of great ones, um, and certainly he's added to the list. Um, and again, not, you know, Ajax was uh, kind of a long stick midi, you know, 5'10 guy uh, coming out of high school. Um, um, and what really, you know, we watched him, he did a good job. Um, but, you know, his intangibles were much greater at that point than maybe his measurables. Because, you know, you look at, you know, we just played Virginia, and I think, you know, if you're not 6'6", six, six, I'm not sure, you know, you're, you're getting on the field a lot. And I say that jokingly, and Lars does a great job. They just have so much length, and they all seem to be super tall, and I say that as a joke. But, um, you know, Ajax is, is a guy that, like, his intangibles, everybody in the recruiting process talked about, they're like, I'm just telling you, this guy's a winner. He works incredibly hard. Um, 
he, he'll do whatever you need. Um, and he's a winner. And not only was he able to cover, but his ability to every day set a tone for practice, much like Brett Makar did. Um, losing Brett was a big concern, but what Ajax and obviously some of the other guys collectively were able to do, um, it really helped us every day, especially in those days where maybe we've lost a couple games in a row. Um, the sense of urgency, the positivity, um, just keeping everybody focused uh, was huge. Uh, but not only was he great on the ball, he was great off the ball, he was great in the clearing game, uh, he scored some big goals. Um, but he is an incredible human being, and as good a player he is, he is a better young man. Um, and I think he wants to coach, um, and that seems to be where he's interested. Um, and he will be amazing. Um, you know, coaches are typically multipliers. Um, you know, you, your kids go out, and then they possibly impact people. Um, he will be an amazing coach uh, because he will care about those kids. He will treat them the right way. He'll be tough on them. Um, but, man, those kids will get better, and they'd be lucky to be around them. Last one. John, you mentioned the 11 first half turnovers. Jack talked about it. Was that more of a case of you not being as sharp as you would like with the ball or a game kind of bother you a little more than um, I always give credit to the, the opponent. Um, you know, obviously they had a lot to say about it. Uh, you know, they are long, um, they're athletic, uh, they get to your hands. Um, you know, they slide really quickly and recover. So, you know, if you do throw it inside and they check it, that could be a problem. You go to throw, they're on your hands and, and they make you turn the ball over. Uh, the windows are super tight, so maybe he's open, but by the time you throw it, they get there. Um, so I give them a lot of credit. Um, obviously, strange, strange uh, day today. Um, you know, just the way it started. Uh, kind of felt like it was almost fitting. It was such a crazy year um, with, uh, with the bus breaking down. And, um, you know, the kind of the ups and downs and everything wild, we kind of were like embracing it. And I thought the kids were fantastic during the rain delay. Uh, they, were, they, they, they stayed focused, they were excited. Uh, they came out um, and did a really good job. Um, so again, couldn't sustain it. Uh, but again, I think you gotta give Notre Dame credit. Um, I'm not gonna take anything away from our guys, um, you know, in terms of how much they wanted to do. Uh, we did our best in the last 48 hours to prepare for, you know, the best team in the country. Um, it's not a lot of time. We did the best we could. Uh, but I think with their depth, their talent, their experience, their coaching, uh, they just proved they were the best team, um, obviously. Don't, don't want to end up on that side of it. But again, I'm thankful for the guys to, to get us here. Um, and again, we'll be back. Um, I'm proud of our guys. I love them. And right now, I'm just going to try to hug them as much as I can and thank everybody for what they did. And um, obviously, thank them for what they did for our program and Turp Nation. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you.